It has been confirmed that Niue has two cases of dengue fever. The announcement was made today by the health department. The director of health and McLean says suspicions arose when patients presented to the hospital with flu-like symptoms and tests done to rule out any viral infections were later found to be positive for dengue fever. This latest finding has prompted a public appeal to be aware that dengue is on the island and to take precautionary measures to avoid any spread of the disease. Just yesterday afternoon we had confirmation um, that somebody who left Niue and travelled to New Zealand um, had confirmed dengue fever and their blood tests confirmed that it was indeed um, an active uh, case of dengue fever. So what that means is um, it's very clear to us that we have had some local transmission of the disease, which essentially means that somebody has had um, the active virus and um, that has been passed on to uh, another, uh, another person on Niue. Um, the re reasonably good news at this stage is that this... Um, the time that the virus was active, if we've we've done a lot of work tracking back to try and determine what's happened, but at the time that it was active was about 14 days ago. The period of incubation for dengue is about 10 days, and we have seen no new cases. So we're hopeful at this stage that it's just uh, a one-off blip. There was somebody here with an active virus and it got passed on. Um, but hopefully they left on the plane and, and have gone again. Um, that's what we're hoping at this stage. Um, but I think uh, the reason we're going public with this is that we do need the public to be vigilant. If they do have signs and symptoms, they need to come to the hospital. And also it is a good reminder that we all need to clear um, our backyards and areas surrounding the house of areas where mosquitoes can breed. When did the hospital uh, first uh, suspect that there was dengue fever here on the island? We um, didn't initially suspect that we had dengue fever at all. Um, what we saw about 14 days ago was um, a run of virus. Um, we had some people that presented with fever and had uh, what we thought was sort of influenza-like illness, uh, but we were aware um, that there was some virus going around. We did do uh, those two tests here um, and they came back <clears throat> with um, positive for dengue fever antibodies, uh, which meant that they had, had it at some stage. But we certainly, uh, we weren't specifically testing for dengue fever. We do full viral checks and dengue was obviously one of them. Is it true that uh, there is another case that was undetected by the hospital and was only later, I guess, detected by health officials in New Zealand two weeks ago? Um, that I don't. I wouldn't say that that's strictly true. Um, the test that was done in New Zealand came back, um, you know, positive, which is the one that we were confirming. Um, the person that was transferred to New Zealand did not show any signs and symptoms of uh, dengue fever. When they arrived in New Zealand, they did not show signs and symptoms either. Um, and if you recall previously, I talked about the incubation period of 11 days. I think after the person went to New Zealand, the signs and symptoms became a little bit more apparent, and that's when they did the test. We, we wouldn't normally do the test before people have signs and symptoms. Otherwise, we'd be testing everybody. So what is the Health Department's uh, plan of action now to avoid the widespread of uh, dengue fever? Well, at this stage, um, we're very hopeful that we don't have a widespread problem, that we had a one-off problem and it's gone away. If there was a significant problem, we should have seen a lot more cases now. And as I said, we haven't seen anything for 14 days. So uh, we're very hopeful that it was just um, a one-off blip. Should the public be alarmed at the moment? I think the public needs to just be aware, uh, take precautions and you know, clear their areas. Um, what we have seen in the two suspected cases locally um, 
it they recovered within 24, 48 hours. Um, whether they had the dengue virus or not, we're still unclear, but they were confirmed as suspect cases. Um, so <clears throat> I think everybody just needs to be aware that there is always that potential um, for the spread of disease. Um, and, you know, dengue, we know that we have the mosquito here that carries it, so we just need to be mindful but we're not aware of any active cases. And it can only be passed on with people who have the active virus. It has to be active in their system for it to be passed on. And we're not aware of any other cases where people have active virus at this stage. In addition, the department is also cautioning the public to be alert and also to present themselves to the hospital <laughs> if they have any of the symptoms. Symptoms that uh, we should all be aware of is a fever, okay, and with the fever, symptoms of dengue are body pains, so you're looking at joint pains, muscle pains, uh, you can have a headache, and the headaches are usually quite bad, and usually behind the eyes type of headache that people complain of. Um, another thing that's quite common is nausea or wanting to vomit, and even vomiting with uh, stomach pains. Uh, please look out for a rash as well, um, and that can go along with the symptoms of dengue. Those are the most common types of symptoms that we come across uh, if we suspect uh, a case of dengue. So what course of action should people take once they become aware of the, these types of symptoms? Uh, uh, what can they do? If you have these symptoms, uh, one or two, please come up to us and uh, we'll get you checked out. And this will usually involve blood tests uh, just to help confirm or uh, rule out the absence of dengue. Dengue fever is primarily spread by mosquitoes and the health department has added precautionary measures for people to be vigilant in removing breeding places of mosquitoes by removing items that may store water around their homes. Petrol prices has caused much disappointment as the public look for alternative answers from government to the substantial increase of petrol prices announced yesterday morning. The news that petrol hike of 55 cents has caused motorists and businesses to call for answers from government. Most callers who were received yesterday said they are extremely disappointed that a huge jump of petrol and of LPG will mean more struggling families and businesses. One business owner said they had written to government to register their annoyance at the huge margin increase. Their disappointment also with the increase of LPG, saying when the European Union introduced the initiative to the public to assist reducing the use and reliance of electricity, they jumped at the chance, but this will defeat the purpose if the price continues to increase. The price increase from $2.68 to $3.23 was supposed to take place today. However, today government said there will not be a substantial increase as predicted, but an increase by 6 cents. As of today, the petrol price will only rise from $2.68 to $2.74. Minister Mang Tongye said there has not been any discussions of what the LPG cost will be to introduce to the public. We will bring you more on this news story in our future news bulletin. Reef Group brought the Chinese Business Roundtable Council on Tuesday evening to introduce them to Nui and Reef's joint venture with government as well as other interests. The group led by Mr. Philip McNichol was yesterday treated to the hospitality of its workers at the Nonu Farm as well as the introduction to the production line of Reef's Nonu operation. Mr. McNichol said the Chinese team, who are their clients, has a vast interest in the islands, especially the Nonu venture. We've been supplying them small volumes of Nonu for about the last uh, 12 months, uh, and they've been doing uh, massive testing and uh, analysis of the Chinese market. 
and they have now decided to introduce uh, Nonu into China. But the, the volumes that they're talking about are, are huge, uh, much more than we could actually produce on this farm today. So um, we're here to uh, uh, show them uh, what a good farm can look like. And we've told them that our goal is to increase our production very rapidly, maybe doubling our production over the next five years. Um, but we'll still have to source products from other Pacific Island uh, countries. What is, has been the reaction to, I mean, we're so remote, and, and obviously you just came from Samoa, uh, and you have an orchard there in Samoa as well. Um, what has been the reaction to the, uh, I guess, the small island that we have, and, and, and also with the farm? It was quite a challenge. I went to China about two months ago uh, for the opening of the factory that will be doing the nonu juice, and uh, they actually wanted to buy all the nonu from Niue. We're actually very uh, firm on that. But when we explained to them that the sheer volumes they needed, we couldn't supply because there isn't enough people in Niue to do it. So we had to clo uh, slowly introduce them to the idea of buying from other places. And that's why we took them to Samoa to, to show them that nonu is available there as well. Will you be looking at um, other areas in Niue, though, to expand your venture here, like the Nonu Farm? I think there's a very good opportunity for any uh, local grower to grow their own farms. Uh, our experience was it's actually quite hard to get land here, so I think it's more likely that local uh, producers will come forward, I hope. Do you think in the future they'll ever get the number they, they wish to purchase from here, though? No. No, not unless uh, you bring in a thousand more or people here. Yeah. Now one of the things that uh, we heard as well is that you'll be looking at your factory down in Amano. Yes, so um, they're generally interested in um, opportunities in the Pacific and um, I'm not, uh, fishing isn't one of the things they're interested in but they have a lot of uh, wealthy friends so I, I showed them the factory there to see if there's any, uh, give them an idea of what, what's available here and maybe they know somebody that might be interested. Any other sectors they'll be looking at apart from fishing? Uh, we're, we're generally taking them around on a uh, kind of a fact-finding mission. I think uh, tourism, they see an opportunity throughout the Pacific with uh, the number of wealthy people coming through from China now that are looking for tourism opportunities. So uh, they haven't been here for long and they arrived last night, so this afternoon we're going to show them some of the other sites to give them a bit more of a feel for what maybe uh, tourism uh, opportunities there are. The shareholding uh, won't change, the government will still be 50%, but this is kind of the dream we had to find a customer like this. It's actually been a, a long, slow road to actually prove that we could supply Nonu from Niue and to find a customer prepared to uh, buy at that sort of volume. Leading the Chinese Business Roundtable Council, Mr Jack Chen, speaking through his interpreter, said the quantity is not as important as the quality and new and Nonu is recognized as very good quality. Nonu from Niue, it's not all about the quantity, it is quality. And he want to, uh, rep uh, he want to present uh, the Nonu juice which came from Niue with the Niue's quality, which is good quality. We have been through the factory and it's very well established factory and if, if the factory uh, not up or any. It's very, uh, it's, it's very, very. Uh, it's pity and it's sort of a waste. So he think that uh, between Reef and probably New Government maybe can uh, renegotiate some sort of arrangement to get that factory up and running. Um, from business roundtable point of view, he will actually um, do every best to help with uh, maybe if it needs to to uh, introduce the investor. For to, to assist uh, uh, the factory up and running. They have uh, a strategic uh, contract with Reef, and Reef will, uh, they will take whatever Reef can produce. But for his understanding is that uh, currently Niue cannot produce the enough quantity as yet. Um, so initially, basically, the market for China through us will be uh, between 2,000 to 3,000 ton a year. For me, actually, uh, uh, nominate, uh, um, announced appointment that Mr. Jack Chen as a uh, uh, trade special trade envoy for New York country. So um, he said, for for to to perform that role, he 
he will、um, help and assist in in many ways to、uh, create more opportunity trade between、uh, China and Niue. And also,、um, he also understood the、uh, the last couple of years the、uh, the very good development and the, the relationship between two countries. So this is a very good start. So he will、uh, try to maintain that and also to help more、uh, between the countries. Today, we spoke to the Honourable Premier Taka Tahalani about government's intentions with the investors. Not all the farm has been planted up until now, and that's that's what we intend to do. We're also looking at the possibilities of using spare land at the airport, as well as land at Mudalong.、Mm-hmm. But but even with all our efforts with respect to that, we're still going to be short. So supply from the Cook Islands and well Samoa certainly, and then the Cook Islands that have gone up to the day, to see whether we can meet the demand. The demand for the Chinese products is 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 extremely high. Um, and the,、um, in terms of quantities, so therefore we've got to we've got to make sure that we can actually supply. One of the things that we've we've、um, we've been doing over the past few years is to make sure that we pay back the investment that Reef has made in in developing the farm. The new government hasn't put any money into the developments at all. All of the money, if, now, if most of the money, has been has been、uh, provided by Reef. So essentially, what what we've been trying to do is make sure that the reef gets their loan funds back, and then we'll start earning earning from what we're we're trying to sell to the Chinese at this moment. How long will that take to for us to pay back reef? I think I think most of it is is being paid back now, and and hopefully by next year we should be able to get some、uh, some money out of our shareholding. The thing is, we're just too small to produce enough quantities to satisfy their markets. In terms of fishing, we are looking at the possibilities of,、um, say, leasing the EZ and determining whether we can use that asset of ours、uh, to generate more income for ourselves.、Uh, the third thing we talked about was using the assets we have in tourism to determine whether we can generate some money out of that as well.、Uh, we've got a, a plan at the present moment.、Uh, That will require a fair bit of land to develop a complex that will be used by Chinese for holidays here, and there are a few issues that we've got to work through. But if it comes out and comes off, New Zealand should earn substantially more than what it is at the present moment from that particular resource. And I'm talking about the tourism resource, the land, and and the island in itself. I think the other thing that we were talking about,、uh, as I've really said, is mining, but that's in process at this moment with a company in Australia. So we're just looking at what the Chinese can can offer as a, as an alternative if if the if the arrangements with the Australians break down.、Uh, the only other thing that we talked with them about was the possibility of setting up an office here to deal with、uh, trade investments and commerce that will be generated out of Mr. Mr. Chen's appointment as a special trade envoy, as well as Mr. Michael Jones. You've always sort of spoken about、uh, the EZ、um, and leasing the EZ or trying to develop the EZ. Was any of that、um, did that sort of develop any further after speaking to the investors? Yes, it did.、Uh, we've agreed that we will examine what needs to be done, what the legal frameworks we need to put in place to enable us to do that. We're also looking at what type of farming, and, and, and our discussion centred around the possibility of farming the more expensive tuna species for sale, and that's、uh, bluefin and yellow yellowfin tuna. So those are those are still. And, and, and look, when you're looking at、uh, leasing the EZ, there are certain international obligations that we have that we must take take care of, and therefore the legal framework that we need to put in place to allow us. To lease the EZ to 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 any company, including this this company,、um, needs to be put in place. The other thing is that these are not simple things that we can do in one week. It's it's something that we need to develop over time. But the important thing is that at the end of that, are we going to make any more money than what we're getting at the present moment? And bearing in mind the fact that the、um, the PDF funds from the tuna agreement that we have with the Americans. Is going to terminate as from next year. Are we going to make any more money out of that asset?
than what we are at the present time. My belief is that, yes, we can, and we should be exploiting that uh, resource of ours, not in a bad manner. It's got to be sustainably exploited. Otherwise, we're wasting our time as well. Are we looking at the Chinese because New Zealand's giving us a hard time? Why well, not giving us a hard time, but um, have a lot of restrictions on how we spend the aid money that New Zealand bring us? No, I don't. I don't think that's 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 part of the story at all. The fact of the matter is that we need to develop our own economy and stand on our own two feet. New Zealand is helping us with that with our tourism developments and so on. Do we need to get some more assistance to, to, to enable us to, to develop our resources, our natural resources even more? Well, yes, we do. And we'll work with companies that will, will agree to work with us to develop our resources so that we can be self-sustaining both financially and economically into the future. New Zealand is just one of the partners, the main partner we have in developing that up until now. It is not giving us a hard time anymore. New Zealand, in fact, is very keen that we develop the models that we've, we've discussed. This group is just helping with development of that even further. I think the only other thing that we discussed with, um, with Mr. Chen this morning was the possibility of having an office funded by his company here, manned by New Orleans, and the possibility of also similar uh, office in Beijing that is manned by New Orleans to help with investments and commerce and trade with China. Are you optimistic that um, these relationships that we are forming with this group, um, as we have, um, looking at uh, some of the things that has been happening in the Pacific, there will be a healthy relationship because we've we've heard a lot of um, you know challenges that that uh, the Pacific has had with the Chinese. I I think we've got to develop our own modules, if you wish. I don't know the models that they've been using in other Pacific Islands. Um, my view at the present moment is that un unless I know the full details of what's been happening, mm -hmm. then I can't comment on, on, on what has happened in their, in their countries, other countries. I can only comment on what I believe we're trying to develop with the, with the company that is with us at the present time. And I'm pretty confident that we should be able to develop systems which will be mutually beneficial to both both the their company and our company in utilizing the assets that we have naturally to generate money so that we can be self-sustaining. Uh, there are a lot of challenges that, that we need to overcome, but at the same time, they're not unsurmountable challenges. And I'm pleased with the way that our discussions have been going over the past two days. There is a view that we can generate sufficient money to be self-sustaining within a very short period of time using our natural resources as a base for that uh, generation of money. And uh, lastly, how much money did the Chinese, um, I guess, propose to help develop some of the, um, the uh, areas or the sectors here in New England? Well, it, as I said, and I think this is very important, that we do have natural assets and natural resources that we can leverage to get money so that we can develop those other sectors that we're talking about. Um, I don't want to make any preemptive uh, announcements at this particular point in time because we're looking at developing some principal agreements with this company that we will possibly sign if everything goes well and just before the forum and during the forum in, um, in New Zealand in September. So anything to do with fisheries, we will either agree or not agree to go ahead with the idea of leasing and fish farming. We will also look at the, the developments of a resort that they were talking about in terms of tourism developments and so on. Um, and in terms of mining, it's, it's, it's essentially we will guarantee that we will give you some support if you need it in case the companies that we're dealing with at the present moment think that they're the only people who are interested in developing it. There are other things that we, we can develop with them, including the establishment of, of financial uh, systems here that would also earn us um, money as well. The registration of companies, how we can deal with that and so on. We may need to change our tax systems and, and company taxes and so on. But in the end, it's using our resources to generate money 
that we can use to develop our island in all sectors. The investors left the island today. And a new addition to Alofi Township has seen the construction of a fence in front of the Alofi Ekalisia Church. This is part of the congregation's beautification plans as the church gets a makeover. The completion of the fence around the church is the first phase of plans to add to the image of the church and also a realization of a long-held dream of the Dupunas of Alofi Ekalisia to this iconic landmark. Work on the fence began at the end of May with labour provided by members of the congregation and completed in mid-June with an estimated cost of approximately $15,000. According to a representative of the Ecclesia of Alofi, this is the result of many months of discussions and plans set up by the church who decided to find their own means of funding this major project. The project has been greatly assisted with funds donated from families in Australia who have affiliations to Alofi and the church, with a grand total of $25,000 raised by the community in Sydney, specifically for the beautification of the church. Reverend Howard Jackson says further plans include the extension of the fence to the northern side to encase the grave sites. On the southern side, another fence is to be constructed around the toilet area with an expected upgrade of the bell area as well as painting of the interior and exterior of the church and tiling. This is all to be completed hopefully by the end of the year. Now those are the news stories that we have for you this evening. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin.